Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. We've heard a lot about grim milestones during the coronavirus pandemic. The death toll is staggering as we are reminded every time the fatalities pass a new threshold. Soon a quarter of a million Americans will have died from COVID-19. But today I'd rather call attention to a different milestone for a different calamity. An event that took just 29 lives, but still resonates here in Toledo in Northwest Ohio. Tomorrow, November 10th, will mark the passing of 45 years since the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald and the loss of all hands in a terrible storm on Lake Superior. Here we are four and a half decades later, and we still do not know exactly what took the grandest and fastest ship on the Great Lakes to what songwriter Gordon Lightfoot called its ice water mansion at the bottom of our greatest lake. What we do know is that the weather on Lake Superior in the early evening of November 10, 1975, was ferociously bad. If ever there was a time when the cliché storm of the century applied, this was it. The Fitzgerald was riding low in the water, its cargo hold hauling more than 25,000 tons of iron ore pellets called taconite. Huge 30-foot waves were breaking over the long and vulnerable midsection of the ship. The Fitzgerald, like most freighters on the Great Lakes, was essentially a long floating box with an engine. Several theories persist to this day regarding the cause of the tragedy. Some say the Fitz had bottomed out earlier in the day near the Canadian shore, gashing the hull and allowing water to pour in, gradually destroying buoyancy. Others say the sheer force of the giant waves at the stern pushed the boat forward and downward to the point it could not recover. Whatever the cause, there was no time for Captain Ernest McSorley, a resident of Ottawa Hills, to even get off an SOS or launch the ship's two lifeboats. One second, the Fitz was on the radar screen of a trailing vessel, the Arthur Anderson. The next, she had simply vanished. Within minutes, the Fitz had broken into three pieces as the wreckage settled on the bottom in 529 feet of water. The crew of 29 had no chance. Had any of them managed to jump from the boat in those few seconds as it sank, they would not have lasted long in the frigid water and vicious waves. If you were old enough to remember that awful night in 1975, you also may remember that the crew of the Fitz was basically a Toledo crew. Six of the 29 men lived in Toledo or Lucas County. A seventh lived in Fremont. That man, by the way, was my uncle, Ralph Grant Walton. He was an oiler on the Fitzgerald. My interest in keeping alive the memory of the 29 souls who perished is personal for another reason. I was once a Fitzgerald crew member myself. I sailed one shipping season as a porter on the Fitz in 1963, 12 years before the tragedy. I've often pondered writing a book about my experiences aboard the Fitzgerald, but so many books have already been done. What would be the point of adding one more. My hope is that tomorrow evening, a little after 7 p.m., you'll take a moment to silently honor the crew of 29 and the mystery that remains unsolved 45 years after it happened. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.